Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl from Team 195. I am hopefully going to give you some strategies on how to deal with travel, which can be a problem sometimes for some of our teams. You have a handout and packets that I gave you that I'll go through with you a little bit later on. But our team, uh, Team 195, has about 55 this past year students. Um, and when we travel to out of state competitions, we have our mentors and parents as well. We go anywhere between 75 to 95 people that are traveling. So when I book for a hotel, I'm looking about 40 rooms or so. So at the end of this, what I would like to do is maybe we can also create a list, which I have up here, um, to try and help you with some bargaining um, for your hotel rooms. Because if you're booking five hotel rooms, you may not be able to get as big of a deal as you could get if you're getting 55. And sometimes it can work against you too because if the hotel is booked and you're trying to you know, book a big number, um, you're at a disadvantage as well. But hopefully some of these things and strategies will help you. So the first thing you want to do whenever you find out when the competition is, obviously is go as early as you can. I will tell you how that backfired on me once, but um, that's usually best strategy. What you need to find out for yourself is um, how many students, how many mentors, and um, are you traveling by bus? Are you booking for parents? So for example, when I book for the team, I'm booking rooms for students and uh, mentors. And then what I do is I have extra rooms on reserve for parents. So parents can call me and say, yeah, I do need a room for the competition. And I will say, okay, we're gonna have so-and-so is coming. They give their credit card individually. Okay, so at least you have some space for parents, but you don't have to handle that on your team credit card. I'm going to ask a question here because I'm, I'm wondering, do you guys use a team credit card? You do. You don't. Nope. I'm guessing because small enough that you don't. Yeah, okay. Um, if possible, it's honestly best. When we book some of the off-season events, I leave my credit card on there just to reserve the rooms. Um, so it's a difficult thing at times because... Um, Hotel will not say, oh, we'll pay you by check, but they don't want that. Mm -hmm. You have to have something that, they, that you can give them that they can um, go on to. So if you are booking for parents, which is nice if your parents can stay in the same hotel that your team is yeah. at, um, if you don't want to be responsible for that, best to have them do their own payment for a credit card. Okay, the other thing you want to consider, too, is how are you going to place your students? So I gave you a sample of a room grid. Um, do you place your students? Do they just kind of like oh, everybody shows up and we put somebody somewhere? Do your captains do it? Who places your rooms for you? What I try to do with the hotel I'm working with is that I will, if you notice up on the top, I took names out, but if you notice up on the top, it has room numbers, it has whether it's a double or a single. Um, when we do worlds, for example, I will have also arrival dates and leave dates because not everybody's coming at the same time, not everybody's leaving at the same time, so you want to make sure your rooms are booked for the appropriate days. So this is something that's really kind of helpful if you can give it to your hotel people. If you're booking, you know, three rooms or something like that, I guess it's not as crucial, but when you're booking more rooms, um, you need to make sure that you're really organized because if you're really organized, you can hopefully um, keep things from getting crumbling <laughs> around you. Um, the other thing, and I'm looking at some of you guys are saying smaller teams, so you're not traveling by bus, you're traveling by cars. Lauren, you guys travel by bus? Yes. You do, okay. So when you book your bus, do you keep your bus, do you send it, or do you do, do both depending on location? It really depends on the location. Okay. So like our, our team has like certain requirements we have to meet for hotels like okay. in for instance i know for detroit like the closest hotels to the venue don't provide free breakfast but that's one of the requirements for our team to have free breakfast because the way our team works is that just given our general demographic we cover the whole cost for every student okay and every group. okay Yep. So that's part of your school policy is what you do. Okay. So what our team does um, is we do, we travel by bus. We used to fly to St. Louis, obviously, but now we bus out to Detroit because that's doable. Um, and like Lauren said, we keep the bus if we can, if it's far enough away, and we send the bus when we can. Um, so when you're 
thinking that, obviously, if you have to send your bus because you're keeping your costs down, you want to make sure that your hotel is nearby and your meals are nearby. Um, and that can sometimes be really, really difficult. So you want to be, you know, no more than about a mile away. You don't want it to be these long, you know, so you have to book your hotel close enough to the venue and you have to make sure that your dinner places are close enough to the venue as well. Because otherwise you, you're having students, you know, walking all around, you don't want that to, to um, be a problem either. So once you determine how many rooms you need, um, and once you determine if you're keeping your bus or not, then you start making your radius of hotels and your radius of restaurants. And I just go online and I start looking for how close is our venue, how close is our hotel, and I make a list of the hotels that are the ones that I would be considering. So first is your distance and where you're going to be making sure that it's walking distance. The next is pricing. So I go and start making my calls and look to see um, what's their best price that they're going to give you. And again, like Lauren said about uh, free breakfast, that's a consideration for our team. We always like to have a hotel that has free breakfast. Um, so in that regard, you know, there's some hotels that do, for example, Hampton Inn is one that I always try to call first because they do have that. Um, we stayed last year, uh, at Hol not last season, season before, at Holiday Inn. We were lucky enough because they had breakfast and they also housed our dinner for us because we didn't keep our bus that time. So we were able to accommodate all our meals right there in house, which is kind of nice if you have to worry about your bus being sent. If you have your bus, then, you know, once again, try to find restaurants according to pricing. I try to stay away from chains, which may seem like that doesn't make sense, but honestly, if I go with private people, they um, usually will work with me better on pricing, and they'll be willing to work on their menu a little bit. For example, we, um, we had a dinner in Detroit that we had to move around because if you guys went to Worlds, you know the Robo Prom was switched from a, a night that it usually was. So we kind of had a last minute thing that we were doing and I was working with a woman who gave me uh, meal pricing. It was in upper 20s, you know, because you're, you're thinking, you know, tax and gratuity and all that stuff. It was close to $30 and that was just really too much. So I asked her to, you know, we kind of went back and forth and um, she got it down to low 20s. Um, and that was very doable for us. And, you know, it's, it's just that kind of thing. You don't have that bargaining if you're going to call up Chili's or something. You know, they're going to stick more to whatever the whole format is. So if you've got someone who's willing to work with you, obviously, um, that's going to work in your favor. The other thing when you're looking for meals, um, sometimes I've had restaurants that will ask to do a buyout. And if you have to do a buyout for a restaurant, it's extremely expensive because, you know, you might not know what that is. You'll think, oh, sure, we'll do that. <laughs> but what that actually is, is you're buying out their night's receipts. Uh, and it's, it's honestly more than you're ever going to be able to, to take care of. But, you know, like when we're trying to feed our team, we've got about 90 people at times. So there are times that we really need somewhere big. Um, Obviously, with the smaller teams, it's not a consideration, but there are times that we've had to do two seatings, so that, you know, can help you as well if you need some something that's a little bit uh, less pricey. And let's face it, when you're working for teams, you're always going to be price conscious for what you're looking for. Uh, as I said, as soon as you know, earlier the better. I always try to get things booked, which, as I said, it backfired me, for me one year, a couple years ago when we had district champs in New Hampshire, um, I was trying to be smart about it and I booked the same week the following year. However, they changed it that year. <laughs> so I had all our hotels booked and I'm like, oh, we're all set, yay. And it was the week previous than when I booked. And by the time I was looking, all the hotels in that area had already been booked. So I had to really try and you know find something that was gonna work for us. Um, that makes it a little difficult because sometimes by the time the information is posted for you, you're a little bit stuck and you're trying to scramble to find some things. You have to kind of jump on it. As soon as those dates come out, I jump on it and try to get that done as quickly as I can. Um, just going to look at my notes for just a second so I can just make sure I'm covering everything I want to tell you. One thing that 
has been kind of lucky for me is that I've been doing this for a few years and I've gotten to know some of the people that of the places that we return to. For example, Detroit. Um, you know, we've worked with that woman a couple of years now and it's just so much easier, uh, easier to find you know, uh, venues for your supper, they all, they kind of know what I'm looking for and what I need. And same thing with the woman at the hotel. So now I can say, okay, I need a block of 40 and she's willing to work with me because there's a trust that's involved. So what I was going to bring up about that is if you are going to a location that you might be returning again, make sure you follow the rules. So at times, you know, if you have to make a cancellation or something that is a little outside the lines, for example, somebody's canceling like two days before, you have a mentor booked or you have a parent booked or whatever and they're canceling two days before. I always try to keep it very friendly and say, um, look, I know we're past the deadline, but can you help me out with this? And there are times when I can actually get it so that they'll let the room go for free, especially if they can rebook it, we're okay. And sometimes they'll say, no, you're too late. I'm sorry, we're gonna have to charge you. And you have to let it go. Unfortunately, you just have to, because you have to be fair to them. Because honestly, when you're, when you're doing this, when you send your rooming list and all, the usual agreement is 30 days. So you send them all your stuff, you have all your information, you send in a rooming list with names, and it's 30 days before. So any changes that you're making is kind of out of the goodness of their heart. And sometimes when we have parents traveling, they don't really understand that because if you're traveling on your own and you've got one room booked, you can kind of call up two days before and say, oh, we can't make it, and that's fine, and you can usually get a refund. It doesn't work that way when you're booking as a team. On the plus side, if you've got parents traveling, they're also getting the price that you're able to negotiate for them. So they're getting a, le a, you know, a lesser price than they would have if they got their own room. When we start booking in Detroit, I was able to get our pricing um, quite low from, you know, now I say quite low, we're almost to $200. But when they were booking closer to um, Worlds, they were booking at $400, you know, so it's, it's very, it grows very quickly as the hotels start to fill up. Um, when you are talking to um, your sales people for hotels, a couple things to be mindful of. Make sure that when you leave a credit card that you're only leaving it for if your bus, if your bus is parking, and for rooms. So no incidentals. Um, for example, the first year that we went to this particular hotel, they had stocked all the fridges with waters and things like that. Well, students don't know that stuff. So like, oh, yay, free water. <laughs> but the waters were $4 a bottle. So we had to make sure we shut that down right away. Um, but the following year, then they're like, okay, we knew we were, you were coming, so we took all the waters out of the refrigerator. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're not charged for incidentals or for room service or all that. So you don't want to go and check out and then find a whole bunch of surprises on your bill because that's not good. Um, also, when you do your check-in process, let me just find where I put it. I usually try to see if I can get the hotel to send me the room list with all the numbers on it prior to us going. So that what I usually do is I will prep, uh, I don't know where it went, I will prep a little key envelope and I take this block and I just stick it on the key envelopes. So whatever the room number is, I have this, we have four students in a room, so I'll have the name of the students and I give those keys to the mentors. So we'll have, each student has a key, each mentor has a key, and I got this little envelope, stick it on there, give it to the mentor so that they have their room for their students, and they have um, also their own room as well. So you have all that information on, right on their key card or key packet so that there's no guesswork. And then, before you hand that out, you make your master list so you have all of your rooms that you know who's in everybody's room too and hold on to this. And then you can give it out to the mentors or whatever you need to do, but you wanna make sure you have all that information too. Um, the other sample example that I put in is our trip itinerary. So before we do a trip together, <clears throat> we have our meeting um, with our students and our parents, and we have just the whole itinerary listed we have expectations listed and we have curfew listed. And then if there's a 
pool at the hotel or whatever it is, any of the extra things, um, it's listed on this sheet. All the times are listed, arrival time to where we leave from, where they have to bring their, their bags, whatever they have to do, check in for the bus, and then um, all their instructions for each day is listed on here. Checkout day, when it's your last day before, you know, usually we obviously have one more day competition, but the students are gonna have um, their belongings and your bus um, will usually be there to stay. You either need one of two things. You either need a room at the hotel that they can house all your luggage or you have to have your bus be able to take all the luggage. So the students have to be up early enough, get their luggage on the bus and then go out to breakfast and then be bused to the arena or whatever that is that you're doing. If you're walking or you have sent your bus already, they're going to need a place to house all the luggage. Okay. And the other thing that I have on the bottom of that sheet is a grid and I have mentors names on top with their phone number and then I have students names underneath and we ask that each student text the mentor make sure that each mentor or chaperone for each room has that information for every person are you looking is it not in there I do have it I don't see that here. you don't have it in your pocket oops oh <laughs> all right well this is what it looks like um, Sorry about that. I thought it was on the back of that one, but maybe not. Um, so it looks like that. So I, I have the whole rest of the itinerary on there. And then I have a grid of all the students and mentors names with their phone numbers. And we ask that the students also will contact each mentor to make sure that they know, um, you know, that they have the right number, first of all, and that they have checked in. And we ask them to do that every couple hours throughout the competition, okay? I'm sorry that didn't get put in your packet. I don't know how that happened. The next thing I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> is food. We talked a little bit about how to find a restaurant. Um, honestly, last year when we went to Worcester for District Champs, I had the bus all set, and we, then we decided we we're gonna send the bus. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't really think twice about it because I knew that the hotel was close enough. We had stayed there before for uh, Battle Cry. I completely forgot about checking for the restaurant how far it was away. And then as we got closer, I'm like, oh, they're sending the bus, oops. <laughs> so I, um, thankfully, we were only about a 10 minute walk. That was divine intervention, I think, because we were lucky enough not to um, have to walk like three miles or something. What I usually do is I send this out to our students who are attending. Um, this is in your packet, right? <laughs> Say this one is. Um, I send this out to students who are attending and mentors as well, and I'll give them the list of choices for, um, so it's like a sample list. Those are all made up names over there, and I have different choices that the kids can choose. Um, there is a couple nights that we bring in food for the kids, and there's times obviously where we go out to dinner, but it's easier if you do a pre-order. One of the things I try to do if we're doing a restaurant or even if they're bringing food in, I want to make sure that there are, again, no surprises, so you have your tax and gratuity, everything that you have is all inclusive. So your drinks, your, you know, all the food that you have, everything is, is taken care of. There are no surprises like, oh, I gotta pay how much for, you know, soft drinks or whatever, you wanna make sure you've got everything settled before you go. So if it's $19 or whatever the price is, it's all inclusive, there's not gonna be any surprise afterward, okay? And then the other thing is I give the restaurants pre-order because that helps them, obviously it helps them keep their price down a little bit because they have everything pre-made and ready to roll. So that's another plus if you can do that. Um, Lastly, and I, I don't know, I know sometimes the status is a little hard to arrange, but I always try to tell them we are a school group and we're tax exempt. So that, um, for the hotels especially. Now some of the, the dinner places, the food places will, you know, allow for that to do tax exempt. Sometimes I have to make sure I have all my documentation for the smaller teams, you may not have that. Um, Lauren, do you, well, your school is big enough, do you, they give you a tax certificate for your so we have a tax certificate for the for the nonprofit. We don't go through our school for anything. Probably you don't. Related. We have a separate nonprofit that we use. So we have all the tax documents for that, but there are actually just for hotels and food. You don't use it for hotels and food, you just said? No, but I should. You you should. Honestly, you really, really should. And you know, just 
from years of, I'm, I'm a public school teacher, so for the years that I've been doing trips with my students, when I do fundraising or things like that, I've always used our tax certificate because you know then you're not paying on you know the fundraising stuff or whatever it is that you're doing you, at least you get that little extra break so cuz you're entitled to it you know so you should have that so if you can if you can go through your school for that that would be great for you to be able to do some schools have different ways that they work that some that are limited you can only use it for certain things and and your school will not allow you to do that my school system did let me do that, um, but if you can or you can try to get that status, and like I said, some restaurants will do it without the certificate. They know you're a school group and they'll just go with it and take your word for it uh, without documentation, but some are not and you're going to have to send it to them ahead of time. For bus companies, I've dealt with one for years, but honestly, once again, call around and get your best price negotiation. Um, I've used a certain company in town, which is big, I won't say what it is, but they're very pricey and they have gotten to be very pricey. So I have not used them for years and we've saved quite a bit by just, you know, trying to, to bargain a little bit and get something that is more cost effective. Um, I don't know if it, do any of you guys do flights at all? Okay. All right. So we'll skip that part. <laughs> when, when we did fly once, say it again. Uh, so, would we fly to Detroit? They probably consider it. What do you? Could you go over that because we've never uh, absolutely that so sure. Maybe. When we were flying to St. Louis, uh, once again, as early as you can. Now we tried to book Southwest for a couple reasons. It was just easier for group travel. Unfortunately, um, Southwest and probably some of the other airlines too. Um, they will. If for April travel for Worlds, the earliest you can do is October. So you can't even look at pricing to say like, oh, what's it gonna be? Um, that's unfortunate, but once again, um, as early as you possibly can. When I knew that that date was exactly the, the three month date from there, I would jump on it and call them immediately so I can try to negotiate best price. It's been my experience for the last couple of years because we were gonna fly one year, it's just, it's gotten outrageous. Mm -hmm. So if you're at a place that you can bus to and you don't have to fly, you're just so much better off. You really are. It, it brings up a lot of complications that you don't have to deal with if you don't have to. I mean, certain locations, obviously you have to, um, but you're better off if you're not. You're just saving a lot of money. Is there a time where, where is there a breaking point in the number of people you have to, go, to decide if you're gonna fly or to bus? Is there, is there a you know, when we flew to St. Louis, because they were busing to St. Louis as well, um, we flew one year because we had gotten a stipend. It, um, I had 65 people on the flight. So, I mean, honestly, we were able to get a really, a pretty good price that year, thankfully. But, you know, after, when I tried last year, it was, it's just not cost prohibitive at all. I think you're better off with a bus. How many do you usually get a bus? We fill the bus when we, you know, and, and but that's students and mentors, so there's not a, not every seat is paid. Um, but you know, we'll have around 40 people on the bus for students, and then we'll fill the rest with mentors who want to go. Um, so in that regard, you know, I think I still think, no matter how few you have, you're probably better to do a bus then try to fly. Now, now what's a bus typically hold? I mean as opposed to have you need one bus or two buses or we we've only did we only did one. Yeah. Yeah. But the, they hold about eight eighty bus? Oh I'm so sorry, you're saying capacity? Yes. Right. Um <laughs> They range. It depends on the company you use. And the company that I use has all 55 passenger buses. Okay. So, um, but you know, it goes from 45, 47, 55. So it, de it depends on the company you use. You have to double check on that and yeah. make sure, you know, that you know um, what you're dealing with because there's not a real standard on that. It it truly does depend. And you know what I have also found. Uh, Sometimes if I'm taking it when I've taken a smaller group to do a performance or something, 
I would try to, I'm like, oh, I only need a van. I've only got, you know, a small group. A van sometimes is just as expensive as, you know, and I mean a van, when I say a van, I don't mean like a little eight passenger, like you can drive yourself. A, a van that you would, you know, rent from a bus company, they're almost as expensive as a bus. So it's really, it, it doesn't, it doesn't pay. <laughs> but my advice is if you can take a bus, but, take one. Let me just ask you, what's the thing that makes you most nervous if you were going to book a trip or, you know, put something together? What was the thing like you'd say, like, ah, what am I going to do about this? What, what would be the thing that would make you most nervous about that? Knowing how many leaves you have to book ahead of time. Okay. you don't know who's committed to going and who's not. And yeah. And what I do to, because I'm figuring, I pretend. What I don't know, I just pretend. I make it up as I go along. So for our team, I just come up with the number and I'm thinking, okay, that works. It's what we've usually done. And then once again, when you're getting closer to and you feel like, okay, I don't think we're going to need all these. And once you get your student list done, you've got everybody, you know, set for what they're doing, um, then I call the hotel and say, we don't need them all. I'm going to give you some back and that helps them. A lot of times if it's you know, a popular location, they're gonna have other teams book anyway. The other thing I've done too is I've asked other teams, we've got five extra rooms, you want them? So that's something you can do as well. Um, what is happening lately, and I have not encountered this before, but I have recently. Um, when we go out to Indianapolis, they are lately now doing what they, they put in their contract, uh, a, an attrition clause. So if I, like I told you about the New Hampshire story, um, my husband was saying, why don't you just book for both weeks? You know, if you didn't know which week it was, which, well, now you can't do that anymore because um, when you're booking hotels, and this started just last year, if I book 20 rooms, if I don't use at least 16 of those rooms, they're going to charge me a fee for whatever, however short I am. So they, you have to use 80% of what you're booking. So no more can you say, okay, I need this week and this week. And then you can cancel the week you don't use because you're not sure when the competition is. Um, you can't do that anymore. It has to be what you're using and you have to kind of propose what you're gonna need. We were, I, I like I said, I always, I try to book, like I already have some of our stuff done for Detroit. As soon as I know the dates, I call them up like, okay, we're gonna be back on these dates. So I did the same thing with Indianapolis. And I'm like, look, they're looking at a couple weeks. We're not really sure when it is. You know, can we talk about pricing a little bit? So yeah, I had you know a good hotel. I was ready to roll and it had a price for about $150. And then they did something completely new and they have moved it to the previous month. So I called back again, and I, and I had about three hotels on the hook. And this woman said, we have a citywide th that month or that week that you're planning on coming in. We're almost sold out, and the rooms are 259 right now. So I'm like, OK, well, never mind. Uh, I said, I would have loved to have us you know, come to see you, but we can't. So I'm waiting. And once again, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing where you can't just jump ahead because now they have this whole clause. What if you only have you know, four families that want to go? So that's a little tricky. It makes it more complicated when you're trying to do that stuff. But most places locally have not started that yet, so at least you don't have to worry about that. You know, book whatever you have. If you have, you know, figure four to a room, and then kind of base it on what you've seen from travel for the past. And then, uh, do you, and I think you touched on that, I still remember. Um, do you have the parents and the mentors pay you for the rooms? What happens is the this. Okay, so the students, um, we, they put out um, a whole travel intention form. Okay, so that is emailed to all the students. It's also, there's a, another one that's emailed to mentors as well. Okay, so the students have to put their deposit in, they have to tell which trips they're gonna do, and so that gets sent into um, our finance man. Okay, we have a finance man. <laughs> Sorry if you don't, but uh, so he takes care of all of that stuff, the deposit, and um, and then we base our numbers by then. So he sends me the list that says who's going on what trip. 
and then I make my list like I showed you my food list. I make that according to who's going, how many numbers I have for each trip. So you saw that one that has different foods. I do my list of whatever trip it is, whether it's worlds or districts or another competition. So I have that so I know who's going to which trip. And then by that, when I look at that grid, I come up with how many rooms I need for each venue or each trip that we're doing. Um, so their money goes to the team, okay, and, and students can get sponsors and things like that. They can earn money and raise money for that, and that all goes into the general account. Um, the mentors, when they send in their reservation form, theirs also goes into the team, and he sends out, our finance man sends out a bill to the mentors, and then they have to pay and take care of it with him. So all of our rooms are put on the one card, okay? And all the meals are put on the one card because the students, when they send in theirs, they're sending in meals, transportation, and their rooms. All of that is figured, he figures it all out. In his magic formula, he comes up with whatever they have to pay for meals, bus, and rooms. So then the mentors pay him as well. But parents, um, if they're coming, I have them check in on their own, on their own card. So they're reserved under the team in our block, uh -huh. but they pay on their own card. And do not let parents call the hotel on their own. They call you if you're booking for them. Uh -huh. They should not be calling the hotel. Uh -huh. Because I had a little situation last year where we had a parent who canceled out, and the woman I spoke to, the person I was dealing with in sales, had said um, one of their salespeople gave the money back to the parent and they charge it to the team. They're like, oh wait, no, we can't do that. <laughs> That's not gonna work. So we have to kind of rethink this a little bit. So sometimes you have to be the go-between in some of the ugly stuff that's not so great, but, um, you know. Well, we've had issues where we've tried, where the room has been reserved under our team and then we try to switch it over to our personal credit card and then there's been issues. And I think maybe it was more that the people at the desk were not experienced, or some were experienced in switching over, you know, because it was under somebody else's. Okay, name. so let me tell you what I do when we go to IRI. I put on our rooms, our block, I put it on my credit card. Okay. And then after, as we get closer, and I know who exactly who's going, what I do is um, they give me their name, credit card address, all that stuff, and I get that to the hotel mm -hmm. beforehand so that when they check in, now they're checking, even though you covered it to hold those 20 rooms for all that time, now when they check in, they can check in at any time, and they go ahead and they, um, they just give their credit card. So, now, last, I'll, I'll deviate just a little bit, but um, usually we have wonderful experiences when we're traveling. Like I said, I've, I've dealt with some of the same people over and over again, so we've got a great, very nice relationship. Uh, and I met some wonderful people who have been very helpful. But this past year, we went to Indianapolis and we stayed at a very big hotel. And there was a citywide convention um, for a very, I won't say the name, but it's very popular um, fitness and uh, nutrition company that had their big city convention the same week. So ordinarily, it's a very pleasant experience. And the woman I had worked with, I had worked with actually for years at another hotel. She moved and she said, you wanna bring your team here this year? I said, yeah, great, sure, no problem. So we did that last December, thought everything was all set. But because the hotel had overbooked, we had our people coming in and I'm getting all these calls. There's no room. There's no, Robbie would call me like, there, there's, it's 7.30 in the morning. They don't have a room. They're trying to check in. I'm like, how can that be? You know, so I go down there with my list and I'm all mad, you know, and I'm thinking, well, how, how is this possible? You know, we have these rooms where, where we're supposed to be, you're supposed to be all set for us. And like, well, I'm sorry. You know, of course, the desk people don't really know. So unfortunately, um, we had some real glitches. And I, I kept getting called like that whole time we were there. And I was texting my friend, I'm like, what's going on? And at one time I picked up my phone because I was like really mad, I was gonna send her, and she goes, I'm coming. <laughs> so she already knew, they already told her like, there's a problem, get down here. But they really, that, it's unfortunate that the people that you work with in sales are not always the same people at the front desk. 
So, like, usually, you know, in, in past years, it's been nice, like, I come in, like, oh, hi, I give these hugs, you know, you think they were friends for years, but I'm really just meeting them. This time, when I walked in the hotel, they were, like, like look down right away, like, oh, don't make eye contact with her, <laughs> because every time I come down, I, like, have something else to say to them that I was mad about. But that's unfortunate. Um, when a hotel does it that way, where they're overbooking, because I'm thinking, you have these 20 rooms reserved. How is it possible that you don't have our room ready? It doesn't matter what time they come. So I gave you a little timeline on this um, that has this. I want to just make sure I gave you everything I said. What I usually do, um, like I said, once you secure your rooms, your dinner, all that stuff, I give them the rooming list 30 days before. Uh, and I make sure that, and like sometimes, like I said, there's some changes into that. Uh, so once you've got your, your room secure and your dinner, dinner venue, I always check back a couple days before to make sure. I would like always um, to have, like I showed you before, this rooming list from the hotel. I want to know what the room numbers are. I want to prep all my keys and make sure all of that is ready to go. Uh, I always call the, hotel, uh, the dinner venue as well before just to make sure they're all set and they're ready for us to come, that there's no confusion. Um, you'd be surprised, there is confusion. I had called a place um, in Detroit, ooh, I don't know, maybe it was um, last year in September or something like that, and I was still looking around. And here it was um, Friday evening and we're in Detroit and I get this phone call and it's like, oh, it's a Detroit number. So I pick it up and it was one of the restaurants, which I had not booked, you know, I hadn't said, and they're like, are you still coming tonight? <laughs> so I'm like, uh, no, because if I was coming, I would have had a contract from you, you would have had a deposit from me. I said, maybe we can work together in the future, but no, we're not coming. You know, so I don't know how, that particular place did business and frankly that told me that I would never book there because <laughs> I don't want to do something last minute like that but three days before make sure you've got all your numbers set usually what I do for dinner is I have a minimum and then we add so for example if we are going to have about you know 70 people that I'm assuming I'll give them a number of about 70 or 65 right around there and won't we'll move up it's a little hard if you're lower than that number you gave them as your minimum you're stuck with the minimum you're going to have to pay the minimum for dinner I, again that's like playing fair you know you just want to make sure you do all the right things um, so if you haven't done that before and you're you know not sure make sure you have your mentors commit that yes they'll be there you know your students are going to be there because they have to be but your mentors are the the fluctuation that you're not sure of so you want to make sure that's done two days before like i said i get the room print out um and when i go to <coughs> excuse me the dinner venue i try to go either the day of or maybe an hour or so before just to make sure that they are really set up i will call them though i call them the day before before, make sure everything is done. Uh, and then the last thing I do when I, because some of your salespeople, they work from Monday to Friday, but you're going to be checking out on a Saturday or Sunday. So I always make sure that they can email us our hotel bill. Um, to be honest, I don't even know where we were, but I got a message from, I think we were in Worcester, but I got a message from the uh, people in sales that said, your room hasn't checked out and I looked on my rooming list it wasn't even one of our rooms so I'm like oh wait a minute that's not us <laughs> so there was some glitch in their system that they thought that was one of us but it, it wasn't um, the other thing too is if you do go with a bus make sure you have your bus driver that has a room <laughs> and we also always invite him to dinner that's something that's kind of easy to overlook you may not think so but it's just you know one of those little extra things um, so I always make sure that I, you know, get my, my bill emailed to me so that I'll have it Monday morning. So if it has to be submitted to the school, there's that reimbursement that takes care of that. Um, same thing for your dinner. Make sure you get all your bills and everything in place that you have um, so you have things ready to roll. The, uh, the last thing, and, and again, this is maybe for bigger teams, but if you need a scouting room, that's also something you're going to want to take care of with your um, sales department at the hotel before you book there. Sometimes they charge for it, sometimes they don't, but at least, you know, if you can tell them, uh, they've got that all set. If you're doing any side trips, um, you need to tell your bus company that. For example, when we did Detroit last year, they went to the Ford factory. Um, 
you know, and I didn't think twice about it, but then when the bus company we were talking about, they're like, okay, yeah, well, that's going to be an additional, and, you know, I didn't realize that they would charge additional for it, but because it was far enough away, they were going to. Do you have a certain formula or percentage or whatever as far as the, the fees go for travel per student or per family, or is that based on just what your fundraising is that year and more so, is that more so fundraising than travel? Here's what happens. Whenever, when we get our pricing for the hotels, because after, after they set the dates, then I get the pricing for the hotels. I get an approximation for the meals, and I give it to our finance man, okay? So we figure four to a room, so they divide the room by four, and then they divide by, you know, how many nights, or excuse me, multiply by how many nights, so then they figure that. So there's your cost for that. And then approximate the, you know, each night, we figure between about $20, $25 a night for food, so right around there, so they add that on. Uh, and so there are times when we've been given um, kind of like a, a bump from a company where we get something, they will reduce it because of that, or they might put it towards busing for a local event too, so they don't you know, have to pay, so students don't pay for that. So as far as that goes, they really just figure it on pricing as far as the travel. They'll divide you know, the travel for the bus, they divide the food, and then they divide the rooms, and that's what the formula, so to speak, is. The fundraising, the students in, um, individually will get sponsors. So they have to, how they do theirs, where they have to have the donation to the team, donation to the student, and then that can come off of there. So if you get a $100 sponsor, they are earning for their own individual trip that way. I know you talked about flying, air travel, and I know, uh, you know, as a team, we have not gone to St. Louis in a number of years now, but the last time we did, it was like two weeks notice of scrambling, and needless to say, the prices at that point were outrageous, and made it definitely not doable for some families, especially if you had more than one child right. in there. And, it, you know, because it's not a given every year that we're going to go to districts or definitely yeah. not worlds, I don't think they usually, like, made reservations a year in advance. Right. So right. then when we do make it, we're scrambling, yep. and we're either not finding it or it's costing a fortune, which, again, then makes it unaffordable for right. many families. So. That's why I said, like on our team, I'm kind of lucky that way because I, I just assume we're going, exactly. and I always like, we don't but, many but you can't. But it's hard, I know. And sometimes you don't find out until it's right before, and that exactly. does make it difficult. But it's true. If we if we can do that, if we can collectively share the information, so that you know, if we have a couple rooms left, instead of giving back to the hotel, you you know at least Absolutely. you can have them. Or if there's a, an, an extra seat in the bus, or there's you know a few seats on the bus, then you still have that too. All right, so I'm running out of time. Is there anything that I didn't cover that we need to cover? I do, um, I will take those that you have filling out yours, and I did give you my card, so if you do want to contact me to tell me that, you know, hey, I need rooms for such and such, certainly feel free to contact me um, with that information. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm glad you came Thank today. You. It was nice having this time together. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.